from the garden. A little bit of purple sage. My Philadelphus mock orange belly twelve. It's finished flowering now this year. Um, and I'm still yet for it to be able to actually smell the orange bubblegum scent that this plant has. I still haven't really smelt it yet to be honest. So we'll see how that one goes. Another auricula down there, obviously that's finished flowering now. Lovely spiria, which we we only moved this into this big pot yesterday because we've had it for years in a very small pot and um, obviously the, it's not been big enough to support its growth so it's never really flowered. But we're hoping now we've put it in this big pot, the plant will respond to that and, and give us some nice flowers. There's my fig, still no fig fruits, that's a sore subject. Calendula that we grew from seed, a couple more succulents. The odd strawberry, we've got some celeriacs in this raised bed, made out of palette collars. And this is a pumpkin, and I can't for the life of me remember the variety. We've also got a cause yet hidden in there somewhere. Um, but if we look here, you can see one of the pumpkins has decided to grow in mid-air. It's hanging over this raised brick planter, so God knows how we'll support the weight of that, because all that's going to happen is, as that gets heavier, where the plant's going over that little bit of metal fencing stuff it's just going to snap off so we need to i'll probably get a load of house bricks and stack them up to support the weight of that pumpkin got some uh, main crop potatoes in two tires one there one there i think they were wileyja i want to say we stuck some florence fennel seeds in this tire these had other potatoes in they've gone now and they were first earlies and i forget what we put in that tire i think it was some kind of flower um Right, some chives, some Welsh onions down on the ground. They're looking a bit floppy. Right, we've got a couple of trees. They're those dead cheap trees that you get from Aldi. You know, they're about two or three quid. Um, it's This is the second year, I think, that we've had them. So no fruits as yet. Um, I'm just letting the trees get a bit bigger. I've not even pruned them. I'm just letting some growth get on them and then I'll start pruning them and that. You've got to be patient with these things, I think. So, an underplanted with a couple of strawberry plants, and there is the odd strawberry in there. I'm not going to go too close though, because there's frogs that live in there, and um, I just I'm not in the mood for swearing and screaming on camera. So, this is my bay. Got the odd herb down there, some older cologne mint, a bit of rosemary. Raspberry patch, and this is just um, one high palette collar that we've crammed into this corner. It's got some raspberries in, and again, there is the odd strawberry plant underplanted, but um, it doesn't. They don't get much light, so the strawberries down there never do that well, really. This is a lovely little verbena called Candy Stripe, and a nice bit of colour. Right. Some Lobelia and Dianthus that are clear. Chills. Right. Oh yeah, what have we got around this side? Bit of lambs here. We've got a few peas. My peas have done shocking this year. They've, they've not done very well at all. We're yet to, to pick one. Um, and same with the allotment. In fact, all the ones at the allotment have, have gone now. They've The plants never took off really. I don't think any of them got more than six inches high. We've got a dustbin full of carrots there, a few more celeriacs, some climbing beans, a couple of broad beans and, and one parsnip. That's just like the random odds and sods corner. And we're down here, we've, we've got a few different herbs. Takes us around to the unloved part of the garden really. This is the, the working area, look at that. Big pile of crap, bits of wood and stuff that I use for things. But along this side, um, we've got honeysuckle growing out of that container. We've got a tire of rhubarb which is gone now for the year. I'm not if even if these things grow a bit more I'm not gonna pick any more. Just leave that now till the next year, let them die back on its own. Got black elderflower, which has the flowers have gone now but they have these gorgeous um really creamy pink flowers on. In amongst the weeds somewhere is my Hinamaki red gooseberry. 
and I've got another one over there. The, the leaves have been battered by sawfly this year, so we didn't do very well with those at all. And this we've got a pear tree, which about six weeks ago had these little white flowers on, which I thought was very late. And we've got one or two tiny, tiny little pears. But it's this is one of the trees that we got from Aldi. Um, last year I think it was so yeah there's, they're not very old so I'm going to leave them leave them for now couple of turnips the polytunnel I do this every year I say to myself right don't cram the polytunnel so when I get these tiny little seedlings and I, I lay them out in the one raised bed that we have they look nice and neat and it all looks very ordered and then literally in not a very long space of time all it takes is a little bit of warmth and boom, jungle. Can't can't even get into it. I've got some rollet squashes, some cucumelons, and about two cucumber plants, I think. And then down here in pots, we've got some tomato plants, which I just had left over from up at the allotment. So we'll see how they do. Passion flower, passion flower. Here we go. How gorgeous are them? And that's just in a big plastic container going up a bit of trellis. We've planted some turnips out in here, but as you can see, they're only seedlings and we only planted them a week ago. That's another rhubarb crown in a tyre. And that is our mint area. We've got a few different types of mint all crammed into there. And I know that Monty Don says you shouldn't mix your mints because the flavours contaminate each other, but it still tastes minty, we don't care <laughs> and uh, all these different mints used to be in pots but since we put them into this brick and stone thing that we built and just filled it full of compost they've, well the, the, it's a riot, look how well they're taking off so I think over time we need to get rid of the amount of things that we grow in pots really and put them into bigger spaces we've got another potato in there, I can't remember which variety that was but again that's two tyres just stacked up with compost and I've got all my various different compost tyres, I use them as, as compost bins and then that's our Dalek compost bin which this morning we shredded a load of stuff with the chipper and we stuck that in there I and mean, this was half a water butt which I've, I've cut down in half and someone gave us a black currant, so we've planted that. So that's what's happening in July. This is Ruby, the deputy head gardener of Petals on the Paving Slabs. She might look cute, but if you don't subscribe, she will set that chicken on you.